hear it all the time. People say they get stuck in a rut with their training and they just stop making progress in the gym. And I think there's a few culprits to this. So let's talk about it and let's just be honest with ourselves. So the first reason I think this happens to people, people get easily distracted. So their intensity suffers as a result of just trying to do other things at the gym, everything but train. It becomes a social hour or a way to sneak in a few extra work emails or texts. And an easy solution to this is just to time yourself. Tell yourself that you have an hour to get in and get out and you have to get it done. You could even time your rest periods. I usually rest between one to two minutes on hypertrophy work and I usually rest between three and four minutes on heavy compounds. So if getting distracted is a big issue for you, give that a try. It'll also make sure that you're not waiting way too long without getting in the next set, which will also make your workouts in general more efficient. You don't have time to be in the gym for three hours a day. Don't tell me that you do. We're all busy, don't lie. Second reason you're probably not making progress is that you're probably not tracking your workouts or following any type of program. An easy solution to this would just be to bring a notebook or use a note on your phone to log your progress, especially on compound lifts, so you at least know you're getting stronger from week to week. And if you want to follow a program, well, you can support your girl and try out my new women's optimization program designed for intermediate to advanced lifters, which will be half off for the launch. Or if you're new to the gym, I do also have a women's foundation program for beginners that will also be on sale for the launch of my new program. And on the topic of just winging it in the gym, don't fall into the IG trap of just following an Instagram workout that you saw that day. It's a gateway to falling for muscle confusion and always switching things up, which isn't a smart way to train and prevent you from executing your core primary exercises consistently and get stronger at them. I mean, you can do it, you do you boo boo, but it's going to take a lot longer to see progress. Reason number three you aren't making progress in the gym is because you're too concerned with the way that you look. Maybe you feel a bit self-conscious, so you perform the exercises incorrectly or just at a lower effort, just so you don't look silly at the gym. And to fix that, you should practice the movement when the gym isn't so busy, so you can get familiar with how the movement should feel and should look. And you can even film yourself when no one's around to make sure that you're doing it right. You'll feel so much more confident when you train if you master the movements first, but ultimately, as with everything in life, who the f cares? You are on your own journey and you gotta think about you and your goals. And the fourth reason you're probably not making progress is that you become overly obsessed with doing cardio and burning calories, that you start prioritizing cardio so your weight training ends up taking a back seat. Because one thing cardio is never gonna do, it ain't gonna grow that booty or those cap delts you want, trust me. So if building muscle is your goal and you want to know what I generally suggest, and of course everybody's different, but as a general recommendation, I would recommend low intensity steady state cardio or lists, just three 30 minute sessions a week. And I would try to do them on off days or at least after your weight training. And last reason, but the most important reason of all, and I'm just gonna say it because I see it with my own eyes every single time I'm at the gym, you're just not training hard enough. And I'll say it again for the people in the back, you're not training hard enough. Now, you guys only see me train when I film. So you don't see how I train in the real world because when I'm filming, I'm so concerned with getting different angles and I have to demonstrate technique so I can't train how I normally do because you might not be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, for the next one, I want you to go behind me and then I want you to do kind of like a dynamic shot around my reps. But when I train in real life, I take that seriously. So let's talk about training intensity and what we can do to fix this. So the first thing we know about building muscle is that you need to be getting better and stronger over time. A pretty simple concept called progressive overload. And it doesn't always have to be adding weight every session. It could be doing more reps at the same weight or even getting a better mind-muscle connection on the movement. So if you never get better or stronger, then you're not going to grow, at least not at the rate you probably want to be growing. Next important thing to note is that the research is also pretty clear about the fact that you need to get within a pretty close proximity to failure when you train to see the best results. And if you have no idea what training to or close to momentary muscular failure even feels like, then you're probably always going to work out with a subpar intensity level. Now, I'm not saying that you have to train to failure every single time you go to the gym. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that you should try pushing yourself to the point of not being able to do another rep with 
good form so you actually know what failure feels like. If you've never experienced it, how will you know you've ever even come close to it? So I personally recommend pushing yourself on occasion on safe isolation exercises like lateral raises, hamstring curls, lap pull downs, glute abduction, you know, things like that to see what failure feels like. For compound exercises like squats and deadlifts, don't go completely to failure. I don't want you to get hurt, but you do want to attempt to go pretty hard on these. So once you figure out what training really hard is, now you can easily apply the RPE scale or rate of perceived exertion scale to your training. And I use a scale because you need some sort of metric to account for how hard you're training and should be training, which is really important for making progress. And if you've watched any of my other training videos or have run any of my programs, then you know that I personally use the RPE scale myself. But I personally don't really see a lot of people talk about it. So let's talk about it. Rate of perceived exertion, or RPE, is a scale that is used to prescribe what your load should be for that set, and it lets you gauge how hard to push yourself. So if you're training super hard and you finish your set and you couldn't, even with a gun to your head, do another rep with good form, that would be an RPE 10. If you do as many as you can and you can only do one more rep with a gun to your head, then that would be an RPE 9. And if you could do two more reps, that would be an RPE 8. I think you get the gist. The problem is, most people don't train anywhere near the RPE 10, 9, 8, or even 7 range. And this is something you can gauge just by looking at people. They'll do an exercise that honestly looks like way too light, and you know they could have easily pumped out at least 5 or 6 more. And they could easily fix this by either doing an additional 5 more reps or increasing the weight, because that type of sub-maximal training isn't going to get you the gains you want. Again, I'm not saying that you need to train balls to the wall every single session. That's not what I'm saying. A proper program should have waves of intensity so you don't get injured and so you can properly recover. But what I am saying is that if you fall into the camp where you're training and you don't even get close to the point of failure, well, it's safe to say that you could probably stand to benefit by pushing yourself harder in the gym. I'm just saying. So if you wanna take away having to even think about your workouts in the gym and you wanna follow like a really well-structured program, like I said, my new women's optimization program is now live and it's going to be 50% off for the next week. This program is a 10-week hypertrophy and strength program for experienced lifters that really wanna take their training up a notch by incorporating advanced techniques, which also makes training really fun. It has links for video demos right next to every exercise, as well as coaching cues, and is information packed, fully backed by science with 36 scientific references. So if you want to support me and my channel, you can check out the first link in the description box below. So I hope this video was just a little reminder that you really should be pushing yourself harder in the gym and that you shouldn't just go to the gym and go through the motions. Like the video if you want more training videos from me, subscribe if you happen to be new, and I'll see you in the next one. I love you guys. Bye. And I thought you were ready to give up. Yeah.